So first of all, before uh, going into the new feature uh, I will present, uh, I will introduce the, the new software. So Daybook 3 is the new version of our Daybook software. Uh, it is a new software, so it does not update automatically from Daybook 2. Therefore, you need to install Daybook 3 on your computer to get access to the new features. Uh, you can get it from uh, our website. It is still uh, a free download. And uh, this is the only way to get Daybook 3. The, you cannot update from within Daybook 2. If you, if you are a user of uh, Daybook 2, uh, you can still keep using Daybook 2. Uh, even though the software is not updated, uh, all the licenses uh, um, uh, have been uh, updated and you can keep on using Daybook 2 for, uh, with all the features uh, as long as, uh, as you want. But know that there will be no more uh, support after the next few weeks and there will be no more updates uh, on Daybook 2. Uh, the second thing is that we do not uh, advise to have Daybook 2 and Daybook 3 on the same computer. Uh, it can create database uh, conflicts. So if you want to test both uh, software, uh, please install these on two different computers on, or two different uh, sessions on the same computer. Last but not least, if you already have a database in Daybook 2 and you want to transfer these database to Daybook 3, uh, please contact Argolite. Uh, we, can, uh, we can transfer, we can make the transfer for you. It's a, it's a simple process and we can help you in that so you do not lose uh, any, uh, any data uh, from the switch to Daybook 2 to Daybook 3. All right, so today I will speak uh, about four main uh, new features uh, of uh, Daybook 3. Those features are the batch analysis feature, the file watcher feature, the uh, many uh, interface changes we made to uh, Daybook 3, and last but not least, I will talk about the uh, ISO compliance of uh, Daybook 3. So let's jump into uh, the first uh, feature. Uh, the first feature I would like to present you today is the batch analysis feature. It's a feature that was requested for a very long time uh, by our users. Uh, it was a quite a difficult one to, uh, to put in place, but we are very happy now to, to make it available uh, for our users. So the goal of the batch analysis feature is to uh, enable you to process many images coming from one system at once. Uh, it means that images can be of different patterns and different dates, and you will be able to process all these images at once and save all the results at once in the database. But for the batch analysis to work, uh, they have to have the same structure. It is best if the images are produced following a methodology. So we advise to either automatize acquisition or write down the methodology in order to get the image structure right. The way we uh, see uh, our users you uh, using this uh, feature is that, uh, for example, you have a methodology, you want to make one image, uh, you want to make, you want to acquire uh, each of the patterns of the slides, let's say on four different channels. So you do all these uh, images or you do this acquisition, you load all the images in the book, and in the past, you had to process each image channel by channel within Daybook analysis. Then you would see the results for each of the channels, and that can take quite a, quite a while. Now, with the new batch analysis uh, feature, once you upload all the images in the uh, Daybook analysis, 
you just have to set up uh, to set the uh, the batch analysis and the software will analyze all the images at once so no more uh, talk and let's uh, demo this uh, this feature so i already have the book analysis uh, uh, here working uh, also just as i mentioned we have a new interface for our daybook 3 uh, main window but here i am in my uh, daybook analysis for so for this demonstration i already uh, uploaded files uh, for this demonstration you can see here that i have uh, one two three four five uh, sets of images so all the sets are of the same pattern you can see it's the field of ring it has been acquired with a 40x and you can see that actually each of the image sets are made of the same patterns on four different channels so dapi uh, alexa 488 alexa 494 and cy5 and each of the channels for each of these channels i have uh, different uh, z positions so i actually have a stack of images for each of the uh, of the patterns so this is how we advise uh, our user to perform acquisition so this way if you actually make a stack of the images you know that within that stack you have the best focus and uh, now because our software can select the best focus uh, it's simple to do this way because you don't have to uh, be precise in the in the acquisition so i have the same patterns with the same channels but on different dates i have dates uh, at different hours dates at different days and i also have one image where i didn't make the stacks i just have one um, uh, one image for each of the of the channels so in the past if i wanted to uh, process these images i had to select manually uh, each one image of each of the channels and then process them and make the the analysis now with the batch analysis feature what i ha just have to do is to click on the batch analysis here and set up my uh, analysis so um, the software will analyze all the results and save directly all the results in the database so i have to select what systems what system uh, the image come from and what acquisition profile uh, i want to uh, to use so uh, for this demonstration i am using a system i uh, entered in the uh, day booth as a manager this is a zeiss axio imager and this configuration is a four channel configuration so i select my system i select the acquisition profile i am using to uh, i used to acquire all these images and here uh, the first uh, setting I have to select is to match the name of the channels of my image with the name of the channel within the acquisition profile. So you can see that um, uh, these are the names of the um, of the uh, of the image, and these are the channels of my uh, profile. Of course, it's easier if both known names uh, bear some uh, some uh, resemblance. So, for example, here I can say that Dapi is actually Dapi, Alexa is actually Alexa, etc. So here I am matching the name of my channels with the name of the channels I have in my um, in my acquisition profile. In Daybook Data Manager, and here I select the patterns to be analyzed. So the way the batch analysis works is that it look within the files in the series name of the file here in blue. It looks for a certain string of character, and it uses this uh, string of character to know uh, the content of the image. So in that case, I'm saying, okay, the field of ring pattern, I used the naming convention. You can see that fields of ring. 
uh, this way, of course, this is uh, you can change that. So you, I could have used just rings or any type of word. I can also use uh, numbers or uh, uh, random strings of words. It's only a way to match for the content of the image with the patterns within the image. I can also add some uh, region of interest if I always crop in the same way. And here I select the patterns to be analyzed. For my example, I only have uh, field of ring images, so I'm just selecting field of rings, but I could select more than that. I could select all the uh, all the other patterns. It will look for additional um, strings of text uh, uh, inside the name of the series to match the image with the right algorithms. I can also apply background correction. Uh, I just need a, uh, an image that has name background in it, so it would apply a background correction. Once I have uh, selected the patterns uh, I have in my uh, library, I can select the analysis to be processed. Uh, as you know, with one image, I can make several uh, measurements. Uh, in this case, if I have a field of rings, I can actually measure the, the uniformity, the distortion, and also the co-registration accuracy uh, if I have several channels uh, as I have here. So um, theoretically, I could select all these three tests to be performed on the same images. Here, for the sake of the demonstration, I will just do one test uh, because uh, I'm using a computer for this webinar that is a little bit old. And with all the uh, application working, uh, this could take a while. So just for the sake of the demonstration, I will just perform the field uniformity test. The final settings are the number of analyses processed at the same time. Uh, this depends on the uh, CPU power on your system. You can go from, you can basically uh, answer uh, any number. And if you put uh, zero, uh, it will uh, just try to do them all at once and use the maximum capacity of your um, of your CPU. The more uh, number, the the higher the number here, the shorter the uh, the processing time will be. But uh, the more it will use your CPU, so you cannot do anything else um, while doing this uh, analysis. Uh, finally, you have some additional uh, options such as hot pixel removals and intensity protection. Uh, that can be used for uh, some of the tests. Once I have entered all these uh, parameters, uh, they will be saved for next time. So if I, I'm always doing the same uh, images on the same configuration, I will not have to change all these parameters every time. I can just directly click on uh, Run, uh, as I will do right now. Uh, just before I click Run, uh, I'm just going to see you the existing data I have. So you can see that I do not have any uh, uniformity, field universal uniformity uh, data on my profile. And here, you can see here on TRY5, I only get one date. I get three dates here, and I've got four dates there. So yeah, so I do already have some data, but I have no field uniformity data in my, in my database. So now, I will run the uh, deprocessing. Once I started the uh, the uh, batch analysis, uh, first of all, of course, the uh, the software will match the uh, the images uh, with the profile and start to uh, apply the algorithm algorithms. On the left part here, you have all the action performed. By the uh, by the software, and here on the right part you have all the results uh, that has been uh, obtained through that uh, batch analysis. So you can see that this is performing uh, uh, all the analysis. Uh, I am performing seven uh, at this time, and you can see that some of them has, uh, has started, some of them are already analyzed, and each time one succeeds you have here the, the results appearing on the on the right. 
And as I mentioned, uh, the software only performs two analyse analyses at once. Um, and it's that's why it's taking a, li a little bit uh, longer. And as I said, I could have increased this number, but uh, as you may know, uh, streaming application such as webinar application or video conference call use a lot of the processing power of the um, uh, of the computer. So I just only used uh, two analyses uh, for this uh, demonstration. Uh, if you are using your microscope. Uh, computer to perform this kind of analysis. Uh, microscope computers have very uh, powerful CPU and GPU, so uh, you could use way more than two analyses at the same time. And anyway, this uh, process will be much more shorter on the uh, on the systems uh, as powerful as uh, microscope computers uh, usually are. You can see it's performing a lot of analysis. I did not uh, explain that, but um, you see that I actually used a stack of images. So the software actually chooses, analyzes all the images and chooses the best uh, image to analyze. And sometimes it does several analyses for the same channels in order to be sure of the results. And, uh, uh, and anyway, this is the best way to prevent any uh, focus issues. So now we can see that the batch analysis is achieved. It took about um, a little bit more than uh, two minutes. And okay, you can see that it, it did 20 analysis. It uh, gave 20 results and it gave us zero errors. You can see that each time I have the results and it matches some of the, some of the, um, some of the channels. So I have a last step. Uh, I, I have to uh, manually save results in the data manager. Uh, we do this step manually because we want, to, want, we want you to be able to actually reacquire images. Uh, if, I, for, if, for example, you see that the number of euro is like 20 over 20. OK, you said something is wrong with my file or something was wrong with the analysis. So I don't want to save the results. So in order to prevent um, to have too much, um, tr I would say, trash in your database, you still have to save the results manually. So I will do that. So now the software is saving the results in the, in the, in the profile. And you can see that, OK, all the results has been um, uh, added and you get the you get the results so now if i go to my playbook monitoring and if i refresh the data okay so now you can see that in my field uniformity i actually entered one two three five dates for these channels and of course if i go to all the um, all the other channels, I add all my results in the database. So in just two minutes, I was able to uh, process uh, five uh, images of four channels each, and each channel consisted of a stack of images. So in the past, this this would have been this would have had uh, taken uh, almost uh, 20, 30, maybe uh, 30, maybe 40 minutes to process all these images, review all the results. Now in two minutes, all my results are in my database uh, and I can just have a look at the, at the results and then uh, move on to my um, other task for the day. Uh, this particular feature has really been designed to work uh, if you do periodic measurement, like every week, every month, uh, maybe uh, every day, if you really have one system you really want to to track uh, daily, but yeah, this is the this is the idea. You acquire the images automatically. 
you process them automatically and all the results are in your, are in your database and you can move on and do your uh, your actual work of uh, core um, core uh, core facility core imaging facility manager. So uh, all right. So now let's move to the um, uh, to the next uh, to the next feature. Uh, I already see that some of you already uh, asked some questions about the um, about the the feature. Uh, thank you very much. Please continue adding uh, questions. I will answer all of your questions at the uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, the next uh, the next feature I would like to talk about is the uh, the the file uh, the file watcher. So you saw me earlier um, uh, adding files to the book analysis. Actually, you didn't saw me, but uh, Pre, uh, prior to this webinar, I manually uh, uploaded all the images in the, the in the library of the book so that they appear here. So, uh, File Watcher is a neat little feature that removes that step. So, the goal of this feature is to automatically upload files into the book. Uh, it's a smile feature but it saves seconds in your periodic monitoring of your microscope. So as I said, if you want to perform um, quality control or if you want to track the evolution of your system, you will have to do images periodically. You will have to process them every week, every month, or maybe every day. So in that kind of process, every second counts. That's why we uh, added this feature. And the way it works is that you select a, a local folder or a cloud folder. And each time a new compatible file is added to that folder, it will be automatically uh, updated uh, in the library. So let me show you how it works. So uh, the file watcher by default is, uh, is off. And if I want to turn it on, I have to um, select what folder I want to watch. So by default, it's using the source folder um, of the of the software, and you can can you can select or change that folder by going into settings, advanced settings, and changing here. So this was my desktop. So I will change that for the webinar uh, image uh, folder. All right, and now I save the the uh, the setting. So now if I go back to my analysis, I can switch file watcher on. And now I'm going to just move this uh, image file from the desktop to the uh, folder I just, uh, I, just, um, I just selected. All right, you can see that as soon as I moved the file, the software uh, caught the file and uh, added the file to uh, to Daybook, and now it's here on the library. So, like I say, it can be seen as uh, as a small feature, but it saves a few seconds of your time, uh, especially when you do, uh, as we advise, um, stacks of images the uploading can take a few seconds uh, or even minutes if you are uploading uh, several images made of uh, stacks. Um, so it is a good way to have this uploading uh, made while you are doing something else, typically while you are doing the acquisition. So if you, um, uh, uh, if you switch on File Watcher, on the uh, folder where you save the images uh, with your uh, microscope uh, application, uh, when you will acquire the image, each time the image will be uh, created by your microscope, the image will be uploaded on your, uh, on your library. So if you start the acquisition on your microscope and then you go to do something else, when you come back, 
the acquisition will be done and all the images will have been already uploaded within Daybook. And then you can go directly to batch analysis. That's how we env envision all these features working together. Uh, last but not least, uh, this uh, file watch uh, uh, application works with uh, cloud drives. By cloud drives, I mean uh, iCloud, Dropbox, uh, OneDrive, or uh, similar uh, cloud uh, drives. So uh, it is useful um, if you, for example, if you have your uh, Daybook uh, software in your uh, laptop that you use to process all the images, and then you have, of course, the images uh, acquired by your uh, uh, by the computer um, connected to your microscope. So if you use uh, OneDrive or uh, Dropbox to transfer the files, uh, the experience you have is the same. So for example, your microscope acquires the images, you, the microscope saves those images in your OneDrive um, drive. As soon as the images are synced with your uh, laptop, uh, Daybook will upload these images in the library, ready to be uh, processed or batch processed. Um, it's a question we, we really have. Uh, for now, the file watcher does not work for uh, distant uh, folders. So if you save your images uh, in a server, in a distant server, uh, we cannot yet code the, uh, the added files uh, because we need the files to be actually created on the, on the computer to be able to, to catch the, uh, the image creation. Next and third feature I would like to talk about uh, is the new uh, or the, at least the, the several uh, changes we made to the, to the interface of both the analysis and the Daybook Data Manager uh, interface. Uh, the, the goal we had with those changes is to both improve clarity and to increase the density of, of information uh, displayed on your screen. Uh, once again, uh, our goal with Daybook and with the Argolite in general is that uh, we want to go from what we call from zero to data uh, in the uh, in the least amount of time possible, in the smallest amount of time possible. And one way to do that is to actually display the information uh, all at once so that you actually get to the information you want uh, quickly. So how does it work in, um, in uh, Daybook? So most of the changes uh, has been made to the data manager part of, of Daybook. So now when you actually go into your um, monitoring views, all the uh, results from the test you made are organized using those, uh, those tabs. And each of the tabs uh, match, of course, a test uh, you perform with it within a daybook analysis. So of course, and these tabs appear when you do the analysis. That's why sometimes you only get three of them because I don't have data for all the tests for these channels. Whereas for DAP, I already have four of them. And uh, the way we did that, it's because we added a, a new card uh, right below the timeline is what we call the results card. And this card actually matches the uh, results card you have in Daybook analysis. So if I, if I just go quickly and make, uh, okay, uh, I'm losing for, okay, I'm gonna do a, a field distortion uh, analysis. Let's go for it. Like I said, it's a slow computer. Okay, so this is the typically 
um, uh, result um, uh, result window you got from the analysis. And now all those results, you actually can find the same results here in the book monitoring. And the added value is now you can actually move from date to date to see the, um, the evolution. So you can see I am changing here uh, the dates. And when I move, of course, the images changes and the results and the value here uh, changes when I change dates. So it's a very um, quick way to see how uh, to see the evolution of your systems uh, throughout time. And of course, you can still zoom on, on the images to get a better uh, sense of the of the distortion in that case uh, and the evolution of this distortion. So the second uh, improvement uh, we made to the uh, data manager interface in the, is the introduction of uh, thresholds templates with values. So many of you already know the quality control timeline, and you know this is a customized uh, code. So by default, you do have some values, but if I go to the configuration here, I can add uh, any of the metrics of this test. So in Apple, I can just add the uh, mean vector magnitude. Uh, it's now here. I can also en enter uh, thresholds. Uh, okay, if I go like, let's say, it's the mean of the vector magnitude. So actually, um, higher is bad. So I, let's say, okay, higher than uh, 50 uh, is bad. If I save my changes, now I have another threshold with a new uh, color uh, added. Uh, but in the past, many of our clients asked us to help them define uh, what is a good threshold, what is the good value, is my system good or not? Uh, it's something we, 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 we took a long time to do. Uh, because uh, for us, it's, it's very difficult. There are many different types of microscopes. There are many different configurations. Uh, so for a very long time, we're quite re reluctant to do it. But uh, now we have more than uh, uh, seven years of expertise doing, expertise doing these kind of measurements. So we feel a little bit more confidence. So we introduced two, um, two templates of values. So you have the typo confocal uh, microscope and the typical wide field microscope. So those uh, two uh, templates uh, actually changes the value of the, um, not in this case, but it changes the value uh, of, the, of the templates and defines uh, what we think is uh, good or not uh, for a system. Uh, before, uh, before we start discussing what is good, what is bad, I just want to, um, to, um, to say that we, are, uh, we, are, we know very well that you have a lot of microscope configuration, a lot of different microscopes. So, uh, and because there is no consensus of, on what is actually a good microscope, a bad microscope, when it comes to measuring those aspects, uh, there is not even a consensus on how to measure uh, many of the values. Uh, so this is difficult, this is probably not right. So just consider that as a starting point. So you can use those, uh, those thresholds uh, as a starting point. And then when you start to learn how your systems performs, you can then tweak the values to a better, um, to, uh, to, to better ones, the one that uh, reflect the quality of your systems and um, and the specificity of your configuration. Uh, the final uh, change uh, we made to our interface is uh, is the change we made to the uh, transformation parameters. So, as you may know, uh, when you analyze this distortion x y distortion. Uh, within daybook analysis, the software 
provide you with uh, parameters you can use to actually correct your images um, to, uh, to correct for the distortion uh, of the field of view you have uh, with your images. Uh, it works with field distortion. It also works with um, co-registration co accuracy. So you can actually, add, can actually correct one channel uh, uh, in regard to the other. Uh, the change we made is that no, those, uh, those parameters are actually saved in the database. So if you want to correct an image uh, you made in the past, you can always get those value back and apply the right um, parameters uh, to the right image. And the second change we made is that we add this small uh, button here with a floppy disk uh, that, that makes it easy to actually just download directly the parameters themselves. So if I just save those results and now I open the file, I just directly have the value here. I can upload that uh, with, uh, in uh, ImageJ or any type of, um, uh, of uh, image processing software. It's just a TXT file. You can use that and apply those uh, distortion to your image. So this is a small uh, feature, but it's pretty helpful if you want to, to correct your images based uh, on, uh, on our measurements. Finally, uh, the last point uh, I would like to talk about today is about uh, standardization. So last winter, uh, a new standard was published. It is the ISO 21073. I just gonna, we just upload the, uh, open the PDF. All right, so this was published in December of um, 2019, and uh, it's about confocal optical data of recent confocal microscopes for biolog biological imaging. So this was published by the uh, international standards uh, organizations. So it's an official uh, international standards. And the goal of this uh, standards is to provide Speci comparable specifications of confocal microscopes. It is mainly uh, geared towards microscopes uh, manufacturers so that all the manufacturers use the same uh, vocabulary, uh, the same, um, the, same um, uh, the same terms uh, for the same uh, specifications. But it also, and it is stated like that in the document, it's also a way to compare and monitor the imaging performance of the confocal microscope. And this is, of course, the part that we, uh, uh, that we liked. So uh, this document has been available since uh, December uh, 2019. And since then, um, our team, uh, our team uh, has been working very hard uh, on to implement its vocabulary and implication within our software. As we far, as far as we know, it is the first ISO standard on that subject. So now I am happy to announce that Daybook 3 is uh, fully compliant uh, with that ISO. It means that all our tests use uh, standard uh, naming convention and that all the reports uh, that can be produced by Daybook 3 in Analysis or in Daybook Data, Man Data Manager. Uh, those reports can directly be used for uh, standardized ISO processes. Uh, this is typically uh, what we do at Argolite, and that's why uh, there, are, there, are, there is continuous update with our software. Um, the uh, uh, field of quality control or performance as assessment for microscopes is quickly evolving. And at Argolite, you can be sure that as soon as there are new publications, uh, new norms, uh, the software will always provide uh, a way to use this norm uh, and to be compliant with all the upcoming, um, all the coming standards 
uh, in uh, in our uh, in our field. So uh, that will be uh, all for today. So uh, during the the webinar, uh, there were some uh, some questions, uh, and some of my colleagues already answered them. But uh, the first question was. Uh, is the batch process only possible if you are within one system? Uh, so actually, the batch process works uh, for uh, for multiple systems. It's just that the batch process can only analyzes images coming from what from one uh, configuration at a time. So let's say you have five microscopes and you have all those five microscopes on the same um, on the same day book um, on the same uh, on the same uh, on the same day book uh, what you have to do is that you cannot process all the images coming from all the system at once so you have to uh, in your library just have the images coming from one system you process all these images and then you empty the library and then you upload the images coming from the second uh, system. And then when you click on batch process, you have to select the other system. Um, and uh, we, uh, we do that for two reasons. Uh, that is, uh, if, when you uh, increase the number of systems, uh, you have to increase the naming conventions of your files, so your file name must have the name of the system, the name of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the profiles, and the name of the of the patterns. So it can be quite complicated. So at first, for this first iteration of this batch process functionality, uh, we just reduced to you have to have all the images coming from one system uh, in your library. Maybe in the future we will change that, but for now, just uh, upload the images coming from one system, process them, and then upload the images from another system, et cetera, et cetera. The next question is, is batch analysis available for the field of ring, the four by four intensity and 3D cross patterns? What about all the other patterns on the slide? So uh, we, uh, there is already a text answer to that. So we just read that. Uh, for the moment, batch analysis is only working for these patterns and the associated tests, but we are working, of course, on more possibilities. Um, and of course, uh, if you want to us to implement new uh, patterns, you can use the poll or just send us an email saying, yes, I would like very much these uh, tests to be added in the, um, in the batch analysis. And uh, last question, text question is, is it possible to analyze some images with different magnification with the batch analysis at the same time? Um, no, it is not uh, possible because the, um, uh, the way, uh, the way the, you can see that when I go to my system, when I select the acquisition profile, I have to select uh, a type of, um, objective. So this is uh, this is a restriction. So actually, when I say you have to select images coming from the same system, you have to select images uh, coming from the same system acquired in the with the same uh, configuration. All right. Thank you very much. I am closing the 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 webinar now. Have a have a great day. Bye bye.